I think I know my marathon shoe. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So I know on this channel, we're supposed to be trying a bunch of different shoes and giving you the rundown on as many as possible so that you can make the choice as to what you want to give a shot yourself. But I've kind of been not exactly doing that. I'll be the first to admit that I've kind of been slacking in the trying new shoes category and that's for a couple of reasons. Last year during my marathon training for Chicago, I kind of tried a bunch of different shoes, super shoes specifically, in hopes that one of them would work for the Chicago marathon. And a lot of them worked at first and then they kind of didn't work so much after all. And that happens, it's just trial and error and a lot of people go through the same thing, but I never felt like I really got a hold of what shoe I wanted to wear. Um, and it was kind of uh, sort of a game time decision. I was kind of deciding right until the very end what shoe I wanted to wear. One of the things I wanted to do differently for this training cycle was to focus on what shoe I wanted to run in and stick with that. Uh, to avoid my PF issues flaring up, to avoid just chaos in not knowing exactly what I was gonna do. Um, and thankfully I have found that shoe. I'm 99% sure I found that shoe. I think my marathon shoe is going to be the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. At this point, I have well over 100, if not almost 200 probably at this point, miles in the Super Comp Trainer. And I wasn't really sure about it at first. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. In fact, I said I probably wouldn't do all of my running in this shoe, but something changed. Something clicked with me and the Super Comp Trainer, and here I am wanting to basically run all of my miles in this shoe. But today we're gonna talk about what about this shoe that I like, why it's been working for me, why I kind of just haven't really been wearing too many other shoes lately, and that's gonna be the video. But before we get started today, you know that we have to take a look at the run footage. So let's do that right now. get started today I do want to let you know this shoe was sent to me by Running Warehouse and New Balance however neither company is going to see this before you they can't tell me what to say and all of my opinions are my own now first and foremost this upper uh, originally I wasn't exactly sure if I liked this upper the material is kind of not my favorite I usually like a traditional mesh this is more of a mesh slash knit combination and I also said I don't really like these kinds of heel collars, I do think that they just rub up against your foot and cause irritation, not something that anybody likes. Well, I'm happy to report back that in my upwards of 100 miles in this shoe, I did never I never had any issues with this causing irritation. It looks like it will, but for me personally, it didn't, and that's in low socks, high socks, you name the sock, I have worn it in this shoe. It is a fairly snug fit, but I do feel like it loosened up slightly. That could be a good or bad thing depending on your preference. But for me, I do like it. I think that it gave it just a little bit more breathability, just a little bit more um, air room for my toes and foot to breathe. Um, and the breathability, speaking of that, in the shoe is fantastic through that forefoot. So while this isn't conventionally something that I would seek out in terms of upper, 
Um, I have grown to like it a little bit more than I did in the beginning. I think it helps to keep you on the platform because you got a lot of platform here, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's grown on me. I'll say that. I haven't had any issues with hot spots or blisters or irritation in this shoe at all. And that's great because I want to be able to set it and forget it when it comes to cinching down these laces and that upper. I don't want to even think about the upper of the shoe. And I don't think about that here. One negative thing I will say though about this shoe is it stinks. Maybe that's my feet, but I'd like to think that I wash my feet pretty well and my socks. Ugh, this thing smells disgusting. Terrible. Maybe it's like the material. I don't know. Just thought I'd point that out. What made me fall in love with this shoe though wasn't the upper. As you probably guessed, it is the midsole. What New Balance is working with here is fuel cell foam, a big old chunk of it. I believe there's 47 millimeters of foam in this heel. And some of you are thinking, well, can't you not run a marathon in that? Isn't it illegal? Yes, it is illegal for the pros, and I ain't one of them. Anyway, as I was saying, you have quite a bit of foam here. It's fuel cell, but it's definitely a special fuel cell. It's extra bouncy, feels like uh, a super shoe foam, if you will. Uh, highly, highly propulsive, squishy, uh, responsive, all of the buzzwords that you can think of about running shoe foam, this shoe is all of those things combined. And what makes it even more responsive and propulsive is the Energy Arc, which is a full length carbon plate in this shoe, but it doesn't exactly feel like other carbon plated shoes uh, that are considered super shoes. It feels a little more natural, a little more like a normal stride feels, less forced, less uh, torpedo-like. It's just the squishiest, most comfortable shoe I've ever tried. I mean, there is no, no shortage of protection here. And I think, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, I'm just thinking of what has been working for me. Um, I think because of the foam that's built up here in the back, it's helping my planter and my heel to not feel so irritated. And that was something that really stuck with me because I love shoes like the Saucony Ride 15 and uh, other shoes with a lower stack. But what I started to notice was that my heel was getting more irritated um, on those longer runs towards the end. And it was super uncomfortable and frustrating too, and also worrisome because you don't want that to happen when you're marathon training. Um, so when I would take this shoe out, I felt no pain in my heel. Uh, and I also felt a lot of nice propulsion and squish in the midfoot. I tend to be kind of like a further back or midfoot striker. Uh, and there's no shortage of cushion in that midfoot either. It's not like it's all built up here and then completely flattens out. Something else that I've noticed about the Super Calm Trainer is that it is pretty versatile. I've gotten into a rhythm with this shoe that my easy pace feels pretty solid and those speed days are really good as well. Because of the energy arc in here, it really does help to get you on your toes and you feel fast. But what has sold me on the Super Calm Trainer for marathons uh, are the long runs that I've done in this shoe. The longest run that I've done in it so far is a 19 mile run and I think it was 15 miles easy and then four at like 8.50 to nine minute pace um, at the end. So by that time, obviously my stride, my you know gait is kind of sloppy because I'm tired, but I had to pick up the pace and I felt like the super comp trainer rose to the occasion. Perhaps I didn't fully rise to it. I did for about like three miles of the four, um, but the shoe did and it didn't drag behind me. It didn't hurt my foot. It was ready to go. So yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but I love the midsole of the shoe. It is kind of second to none right now for me. Um, there are a little bit of creases here in the medial side because this is a neutral shoe now, folks, and it, there is a lot of stack here. That does mean that if you are a person who overpronates a bit, you probably will overpronate in this, especially when you get a little bit sloppy. I know that I do, but um, there are definitely worse shoes on the market than this one when it comes to uh, stability. Do I think this is a stable shoe? 
I wouldn't say that. I mean, it is a neutral shoe, but I wouldn't say it's a stable neutral shoe. I would say that for the stack that it has, it could be a lot worse. As far as durability of the midsole goes, I would say that it still feels super soft, super squishy. Maybe now I'm starting to feel that it's a teeny bit less so, but I'm talking like so, 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 so teeny. Like I'm really being nitpicky and there is still a ton of cushioning under my foot. I think it could easily go another 100 miles, which would probably bring it up to uh, around 300. So I gotta say, I gotta give it to them for the durability of this midsole. Now for the outsole, kind of zoom in here on the shoe, maybe you can see. The traction is definitely smoothed out in this area here in the forefoot. We have some fraying of that midsole that's kind of poking out. Um, and back here, yeah, some traction definitely smoothed out on this side for sure. Um, so. It's gonna look like that obviously after using the shoe for upwards of 100 miles. Um, I think it could definitely look worse. And that being said, despite this like tread being worn out, I don't have any issues with slipping. It still grips onto the pavement just fine. This shoe is $179.95 on runningwarehouse.com and I definitely recommend it if you are looking for a shoe that has a little bit extra juice, a little flair, a little excitement, as opposed to just a standard daily trainer, um, but you don't necessarily want to run in a super duper shoe. If you're interested in picking up a pair of the New Balance Super Comp Trainer, I will post links in the description of this video. Just click those and pick up your own pair. Just keep in mind, these are affiliate links with Running Warehouse. However, it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel. So I can keep making these videos despite not running in a ton of different shoes right now. I can tell you about one that I am jazzed about very jazzed. So jazzed that yeah, I think this will be my shoe for the Suffolk County Marathon on October 23rd. Uh, again, I'm not an elite so I can wear this and be just fine. I think that 19 miles with four at the end being tempo seals the deal on this working out. If it felt good then, I think it'll feel good for 26. But we're gonna keep taking it up there and seeing how it goes and boy do I hope it keeps feeling good. I'm definitely gonna order a new pair of these soon too. Probably the white pair just to switch it up um, because I want a fresh pair for race day if this is indeed my shoe. I think it is, and I know it is, but I'm nervous to jinx it. Well, everyone, that concludes my video on what shoe I think is going to be my Suffolk County Marathon shoe. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe when you're done with all that. Hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Should I get the same color? Should I go with the white? What do you think? I have another recap video for you coming up very soon. It'll be weeks eight and nine of my training since week eight was pretty much just like a recovery uh, cutback week. So um, we'll talk about both weeks in the next video. Uh, but until then, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time.